Hello, my name is Glenn Schultz. Today we're going to talk about FDT for factory automation in a scalable, flexible, and device integration strategy. This is the first in a multi-part series of this topic. Let's start with some of the basics of the FDT standard. The first part is called the DTM or Device Type Manager. This is similar in concept to a driver for a printer in a Windows application. The device in the factory automation environment is represented by this DTM component. The DTM is typically delivered by the device manufacturer and it's used for configuration, diagnostics, asset management, calibration, and a host of other functionality. The DTM includes a very rich graphical interface that allows the device manufacturer to represent their product in the best light possible. The second part of the FDT standard is called the frame or frame application. DTMs are used inside of a frame application to communicate with all the individual devices in the factory automation architecture. The frame application itself can be any type of application that supports the FDT interfaces. So this could be things like PLC engineering tools, basic device setup tools, HMI, and other types of applications. The frame application and the DTMs within that frame application interact on software interfaces that are well defined in the FDT standard. Then the next part of the FDT standard is the notion of topology. So each physical device is represented by a single DTMs. Then these DTMs have the same relationship as the hardware and together they create a topology. So these devices and the DTMs that represent them can be things such as proximity sensors, photo eyes, AC drives, and so on. Then there's a special class of DTMs that are called gateway DTMs, which support devices that bridge between different networks. This suggests that the FDT standard can support any number of networks, and it's able to seamlessly tunnel between these networks in complete transparency to the user. So wrapping up the FDT basics, the key point is that this DTM, a single DTM, can integrate into a variety of different frame applications. These can be things like a simple standalone device setup tool that's used to configure a device in a standalone application. It can be a much more comprehensive environment, things like a PLC engineering or programming tool that not only needs to configure or parameterize a device, but also needs to be concerned about network configuration, I.O. mapping, diagnostics, and so on. Or it can be a host of any other applications like HMI, asset management, condition monitoring, and so on. So the challenge in the factory automation environment is vendors often have different business cases requiring different kinds of software. So probably one of the more complex variations is something like an engineering tool that has to be able to do things like perhaps programming control logic in the PLC, network engineering, diagnose and configure devices that are supplied by the vendor, as well as diagnose and configure devices that are supplied from third party vendors. Or there could be something that's a much simpler business case like a device setup tool used in a case where you just need a standalone configuration tool for a product when it's not being integrated into a higher level system. And here you just need basic configuration and diagnostics for that particular device. Or in any of these cases, there might be the necessity to integrate some tools from third parties. So all tools have to deal with device functionality. Things like device configuration and diagnosis often overlap. 
And so the effort to support the different use cases is shared by the FDT standard. So the FDT concept offers a means to embed device functionality into different tools using a reusable component called the DTM. From an FDT perspective, usage scenarios are separated from the device specific details. And by taking this approach, the applications become more flexible. It allows reusing the DTM in the workflows of any of the variety of software that it might be required for. So here's an example of a simple device setup tool, in this case, configuring an AC drive. It's used for quick and easy configuration of the drive in a standalone tool. So you see on the upper left corner that the end user might select the device type in the main menu, or perhaps the device tool selects the device once it's plugged in to that particular device. The tool then establishes a point-to-point -point connection with the device, and the de the device DTM user interface, the graphical user interface, is opened and displayed in a full screen environment. And this means that we don't have to deal with the topology or other types of issues since this is a simpler tool and we're talking in a point to point fashion. So this user interface may contain, for example, the wizards for an AC drive that ask what type of application this drive is being applied in. And through that information, it's able to pre-configure many of the parameters for that particular drive. And then in the end, the user completes the configuration and is probably also able to do some basic diagnosis using that DTM. Then we could take a more complex environment, something like an engineering tool for programming a PLC, and take that same device DTM for the drive, but now use it in an engineering tool. So the user interface for the drive is exactly like it was in the setup tool, since that's supplied by the DTM. So here again, the user can configure the drive and perform the same diagnostics that they were able to in the standalone environment. But because this is an engineering tool, it needs to know more information, such as the I.O. Uh, mapping for the particular device. So that I.O. information then becomes mapped to the variables in the PLC, and that's used for the programming environment in the PLC, as you see in the lower left picture. Then similarly, we can integrate third-party devices into this engineering tool. So the DTMs from other vendors can integrate in the same manner that DTMs from the main supplier integrate. That specific device DTM provides the same sophisticated user interface and the best usability for that particular device. If there is not a specific device DTM available, then it might be possible to use an interpreter DTM. These class of interpreter DTMs support many devices via their device description. So they don't have a special purpose built DTM, but it does provide sufficient functionality to configure the device. It's not going to have the same rich graphical user interface and diagnosis capabilities that a full featured DTM will have, but it certainly allows the device to be integrated into the same engineering tool in the same manner as any other DTM. So in conclusion, the FDT standard allows extended device support in a wide variety of software tools just simply by integrating these DTMs. System vendors can integrate their own devices through this method as well as third-party devices into any of the frame type applications such as engineering tools, uh, HMI, and so on. DTMs integrate devices in simpler device setup tools as well. So it's easy to take that same DTM, create a standalone simple configuration tool that ships with that product, 
as well as use that same DTM in a much higher level application. If a specific built DTM is not available for a device, it may be possible to use what are called interpreter DTMs. This works for environments like Profinet with GSDML files, Ethernet IP with EDS files, IO link with DD files, Heart with DD files, and so on. The nice thing is there are standard interpreter DTMs, toolkits for building frame applications, and toolkits for building DTMs on the open market. These tools reduce development efforts by not having to start from the ground up to be compatible with the FTT standard. And then these devices that are supported by device descriptions and full-featured DTMs can easily coexist, coexist in a single network configuration view. The FDT standard is supported by more than 100 companies worldwide. Many of these companies are also members of the FDT group. In order to support the ongoing technical development of the FDT standard, as well as market the standard on a worldwide basis. If you're not a member of the FDT group, I'd encourage you to look into becoming a member to support that activity. If you're looking for additional information on the FDT standard, you can visit our website at fdtgroup.org. We also have additional technical information available on YouTube, or you can join our LinkedIn users group. We publish a quarterly newsletter called Device Integration Strategies. You're able to get a subscription to that for no charge simply by visiting the URL indicated on the screen.